Hello fellow scholars, so today I've got a big one for you to work on. Um, a couple of things about topic two, uh, waste management, so we're going to do a little bit of energy utilization in this video. Okay, remember in the daily slides you can find the link and that will take you to the presentation that I'll be describing right now. So energy utilization, storage, and distribution. There's five big points that we're going to be talking about. So in the first video, I'll talk a little bit about the embodied energy, energy storage systems, and then individual energy systems. Okay. Then the next part, there are these two tools that you can use to analyze products, processes that's related to green energy and not green energy, but that's related to waste management, that's related to green design, eco-design, sustainable development. Okay, so to start with, embodied energy. I know some of you physics students have heard embodied energy, but with reference to design and technology, embodied energy is specifically about the total energy required to produce a product. Okay, so all of the energy that's required to produce a product. Like I said, I know in physics it's a little bit different, but in design and technology that includes the energy is things like extraction of the raw materials, where the transportation cost as soon as it gets delivered, the, the housing and factory, the factory costs, all those things are considered and that's what creates the embodied energy. Okay, so all those different systems to create embodied energy is how much energy a product has. So I'm sure you can find other examples of products that have energy. So you look at, you know, you see orange juice. It's 100% pure Florida orange juice. So the crops and the materials are from Florida. However, it gets shipped internationally. And then after it gets shipped internationally, all of that, that energy usage, like transportation, like physical labor, energy being pushed and moved around, to boxes or getting the fruits, whatever it is, all that stuff is what creates embodied energy. So as you're working along too, there is a little questionnaire that I want you to ask forms. And one of the first questions is how does embodied energy affect designers, manufacturers, and consumers? So we've talked a little bit about that before with relation to commercial production and where factories are located based on the customers. Yep. So that is about um, why would you want to locate the factory closer to where people are going to use it? Why does Amazon have their warehouses in these different parts of the country or in different parts of the world? How does that relate to manufacturing? And then how does that affect the designers so that as they're thinking about all this process, what can they do to change things? Okay. You may need to do a little bit of research or just press pause, have a think, and answer that question. So... Embodied energy. The next one is energy storage system. So there's three different types of systems that I'm going to talk about. I feel like I'm going a little bit fast. I'll try to slow down the speed at which I talk. Um, so the first energy system is called the grid. Maybe you've heard this before. People talk about living off the grid or I'm connected to the grid. So what that refers to with energy is how power plants, we talked a little bit about that last class when we were talking about energy production, power plants, um, hydroelectric dams, all these things that generate electricity. So they create it and they make it in this one place, but then how does it get to your house? That's through the grid. That's the way that it's distributed. So it starts off in the factory, then it can go here, these series of electrical lines, and then it goes into smaller, it can go to industrial, go to commercial, or go to residential. So it's this kind of grid and connected systems that distribute the energy. Okay, is that pretty, pretty simple to understand? But just remember there's this one factory and it's like a spider web that just goes out and branches out to touch all these different places to share the energy. So that's why when we talk about living off the grid, they disconnect to that and then they have their own source. So here's a little bit of, it's up to you if you want to have a look through it, but it's talking about large scale energy uses. You can read through, watch some of the electrical energy video, how it works. Um, but really it's, it made a big change because all of a sudden more people could have access to energy as the development of energy was, as, it, as energy developed. Um, 
So all these different types of things, power stations and then distribution and then retail. So it's a little bit more detailed, but the big picture is this system starting with the factory and going down to houses or other smaller buildings. Okay, have a look more if you want to read a little bit more about the grid system. The next one is about electrical car stations. So this is a big question for places, cars like Tesla. All these electrical cars are being sold but the question is, what happens when they run out of energy? You know, you can't just plug it into a wall socket in the middle of the desert. Or you can't plug it into a wall socket as you're driving through the mountains. So this is the question, where do all these electrical car stations, where can they be stored so that the power can be generated? And again, it could be a part of the system. Maybe they need to have a part of that grid system to connect to these charging stations. So... It's something to think about and to understand where this energy is being stored. All right. The next one is in batteries. Batteries, if you've ever opened up a battery before, I don't suggest it, but you can see there are these, basically it's these little layers and it, it, what the battery does is it creates this chemical reaction. And that chemical reaction, rather than twisting a turbine, that's what creates the energy. Tesla created their new battery packs, um, but it's just another form of, energy production through batteries where it's this chemical reaction. Um, there are different types of batteries. So hydrogen fuel cells, that's a big question. Uh, lithium batteries, nickel cadmium batteries, lead ba batteries, and I think it's lithium, I forget what the PO stands for. Um, but so all these things are different ways to create energy through these chemical reactions. Uh, the next so that's batteries, and you can store the energy. You know, um, lithium batteries can be recharged. So these, all these, this is another way to store that energy rather than having to be connected to the grid. Okay, and here's a little um, chart uh, table that's showing the difference between the battery types, the costs, their efficiency, the environmental impact, and the reliability. Press pause, have a read through, lithium polymer, lead acid, nickel cadmium, um, lithium, and hydrogen fuel cells. I also read a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, actually, in, in National Geographic, a little article about the lithium fields that are in Bolivia. It, it, was, it was interesting. I liked it. If you want to learn a little bit more... Um, you can have a click on, link, click on this link and you can read more about that one, okay? But press pause, read through these, and just pay attention to, to the different types of batteries and how they're affected in a way, okay? Put this in your notes too as another suggestion. So because of these batteries, they have different size batteries which allow things to become more portable. So there's micro batteries, things that goes in watches, hearing aids, small batteries like toys, lights, medium-sized batteries for bikes and cars, and then even bigger batteries for submarines or lar storing large amounts of energy on spaceships and et cetera, et cetera. So there's different sizes of batteries, but all of that is allowed to some type of portability. Here's another task that I'd like you to do in that form. So think about, there's a couple of choices. You can pick one, but think about a product and how has uh, portability, batteries, um, storage of energy affected the way that these things were used. So the mobile phone is one of the good examples. As soon as it became portable, all of a sudden people can communicate and connect with other people through without having to be attached to a line. So it's automatically starting to disconnect from that grid. It changes things greatly. You can even see it today, right? Huge change in what that portability means. So tell me, pick some, pick a product, and in that form, tell me how was it affected? How did the battery being made affect it? Okay, so reinforcing that again, there's a Tesla battery pack. That versus off the grid, right, connected to that system versus solar powered disconnected. And a lot of that is through batteries, through the storage system of energy. And then the energy gets used at nighttime or it gets used another time, right? So all these solar powers can be used for lots of domestic 
cases, right? Camping, backpacks, panels, little calculators, all these things can possibly be used at different scales. But the advantage, the disadvantage is that it doesn't work if it's cloudy or if it's rainy or if it's nighttime, right? And it can be a little bit expensive to set up. But as you know, the advantage is it's off to grid, not dependent, it's clean, no CO2 emissions, and in the long run, it will save money. A similar question, advantages and disadvantages of large-scale and small-scale wind. So if we're talking about, talking about energy in the same way. So if you think about large-scale farms and small-scale farms for wind, and again, that's being disconnected from that grid. So that's what that means. Combined, this is another source of energy, this combined heat and power. So what this does is if you're cooling your house, rather than cooling it with just air conditioners, there's a unit that can heat and can cool down. So this simultaneously works, they work both together, which ultimately can reduce the, the cost of, of energy, et cetera, et cetera. So rather than just using one, you're using a combined unit, okay? So that's it for the energy and storage systems. Uh, let's go back to a better slide. So that's it for the energy and storage systems and, and individual energy systems. Next up, I want to show you, talk to you about the different tools. Okay, So there are two tools you can use to assess the uh, energy and the sustainability of certain, certain products. Okay. So, uh, see you next time.